So welcome to part 32 of the restoration and installation of the Forshaw Andrews 1865 pipe organ here at um, Tango Towers Chapel. So this is the upper board of the great sound board which I've taken off. We've only got a couple of screws holding it just to secure it roughly in place and if you remember I said We've got the four foot flute goes there. So that just needs cleaning and fitting when it, this goes back in the oven. But what, we, what we're here to do is that on this, which is the nearest set of pipes, the six ranks, this is the one nearest the passage board. In other words, the gantry between the great sound board on, the, on my right and the swell on the left with the shutters on the box. What we're going to do is to fit the brand new 15th to this. So when we bought the organ, this set, this rank, was populated by a Dulciana 8, which is a soft string stock. Now that Dulciana 8 went on this organ in 1919, stroke 1920. So all brilliance would be removed with that dull string stock. Now this already has a string on the grate, on this bottom keyboard, on this bottom soundboard. And that is called a bell gamba, but it's a harsher string than a dulciana. So they must have felt that they needed something quieter. Anyway, they got rid of the 15th and we've had to pay £2,000 plus VAT to have one custom made for this organ it, with exactly the right scale. In other words, how thick the pipes are, so the volume is going to be the same as the other ranks. And that's going to fit in beautifully, I'm sure. Now what I'm hoping is that they haven't opened up all these holes, so that my new pipes just fall through. So the first thing we do, therefore, is we're just going to put some rack fillers on. These have previously been cleaned. I don't need to be fussy about how many we put in. Let's get a few of these installed. So, probably do every other. That sounds like a bit of a, of a job. No, I don't want that one. I want to see what I'm doing. We'll miss that one out. Let's get the rubber mallet on some of these. You don't want them to be floppy because you're going to end up, if you do, with pipes swaying under their own weight. Yeah, I've ended up putting all but two in. I've ended up putting all but one in. That one I don't want to put in. So if I can find the rubber mallet, I can't. I'll tell you what, I'm going to use this metal hammer. I'm going to be very, very careful. It's the wrong tool. Expecting goes that way, and we fit that. It's always fun because we've got to line everything up before attempting to press anything home. We'll just 
split there at the end. That will be addressed before we actually install it. Again, haven't got the rubber mallet. So we'll use this hammer carefully with a piece of timber. Hopefully, that looks like they are home. They are. Because what you don't want to end up doing is having this spacing between the upper board and the rack board wrong. If you did that, you can end up with doing these holes wrong with. So we're going to have to, we're going to end up having to cover this, I'm sure, with another piece of timber. Now are we going to use MDF or are we going to use some very thin mahogany and buy that in? Well that's something we're going to find out. The next thing I need to do is to get out the box of organ pipes which we've had made. There's most of them on that stool and the rest of them on that right there. It's always nice to see brand new organ pipes and those go up to about three quarters of an inch in speaking length. So they're very small so they're very high note. I've just put the first two plus that one I initially tried. So straight away you see that that is loose in the rack board. That one isn't. So poor practice would be just to shove felt round. That said, that may be a situation where a piece of leather round is all that's required. So we'd have to cover the whole thing up if we don't need to. But we'll see. So I'll put the rest in and see whether my fears of the toes going down the upper board holes are substantiated or not. Okay, so that's the more all in on this very first fit. And I'm pleased to say that none of the holes, I just can move the camcorder. None of the holes have been opened out. So even the smallest pipe, top G there, which has this minuscule speaking length. I'll just carefully blow through that. Very, very high note. It doesn't fall into that hole in the bottom. See, there's a countersunk hole where the air comes up and that's countersunk by burning it. We don't have a burning iron to do that. So if you do it with a drill, it's not gonna be as good a seal as if it's burnt in. So I'm glad that we're not going to have to struggle there. So none of them have had that treatment. So even at the top though, they are too loose. But when we get to the bottom, and this is what I find fascinating, they're not far off being right. So a bit of leather round and they, that will be absolutely fine. So. We get the first bottom octave there, fine. Then we get to here, 
and of course they're just ridiculous. So we're going to have to cover that with the timber and then re-drill for most of them. But it, I, I, you know what? This Dulciana, which was on here before, clearly was Tennessee. In other words, it didn't have a bottom octave because it shares the bottom octave with the stop die pace and base. And so they never messed up with these holes. All this tells us is that these pipes originally were one note larger scale than what we've had these manufactured. So the research which we've done was one note out. Now it doesn't matter, but it just goes to show that they were just that little bit thicker on this organ than what the research showed. Otherwise they'd have gone straight back in. So at the other side, because it shares the weight, you, for the first couple of octaves it's every other note. The C sharp side, C sharp, D sharp, F, G, A, B. And then we've got this ridiculous thing. So those, we could just put some leather around. The rest of them, we're going to have to get some timber and redrill every hole exactly. And that's called racking in the pipes. They're going to the rack board, they're racked in. So that's where we're going to leave it. We'll have to get some timber. And I don't know whether it's going to be the MDF from the, from the DIY place or whether it's going to be a piece of mahogany that we specially have made to fit as a, um, a, a piece on top. So there we are. It doesn't have to go the full length or it mustn't go the full length. Then I'll show you from there how it's done. But I'm really pleased that the bottoms all fit in. So that's better than it, it could have been and the bottom octave were never disturbed. So that's it for now. I'll see you when we get some timber. Right, so we've now had this piece of timber arrive, which has been custom planed, etc., for us in mahogany. Taking the pipes out. So there we are with this. As we, do, as we know, the holes have been expanded for the Dulciana, which are fitted in 1920, apart from the bottom octave. So we've got here a piece of mahogany. I'm a big believer that rack boards should be in mahogany, upper boards should be in mahogany, and the top of the, the soundboard, the tabletop, is also mahogany. But um, I don't think Forster and Andrews would believe it's in mahogany for the rack boards. Now, what we could have done is we could have replaced the whole rack board and redrawn all the holes for a mahogany one, because there are cracks and splits, which we will deal with, but we would spoil the history of the organ. So when we put this veneer on, and by veneer I'm talking 10 millimetres thick, we're going to leave the bottom two, four, six, and we're going to leave the bottom six at this end. So we just need to cut that exactly, because I want those to stay as they were drilled originally. We will have to put a bit of leather around because our pipes are about one note um, in scale smaller, which is our research. I mean, I, I suppose we could have found out all the parts, but I didn't want to wait. I had to wait, what, eight months or something for this to be manufactured. I didn't want to get this state to this stage and wait eight months. So between the pipe makers and myself, we worked out what we thought the scale would be on this organ, and we were one note out. So that just, that's, that's a loudness thing. So, we need to just mark off, uh, there is a, a carpenter's pencil. It would be nice if I can do this in its entirety today. What I'd like to do is probably cut this round like that. I think we'll do that first on the bandsaw. Now, cut. Yes, I think we'll have it flush up to this edge. We could have had it in the middle. We'll have it flush up to this edge. So what do we want off at this end? One, two, three, four, five, six, it's there. There 
make sure we're exactly where we want to be at this end. We're done with an assistant today. There. I think we'll, we'll put a screw in at one end, uh, just for safety. Now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have a step. We're gonna do it that way. So we're going to be, we're going to be screwing this. I'm not going to glue it at all, and again, that makes it reversible. So what I'm going to do, we'll screw that down. That will give me an exact position I want to cut that. We'll cut that. We'll come back to camera. There we go. That's the result I wanted. So we've got. Let's count the parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have to make sure that that still fits. Absolutely plenty of room. And we'll just check that the six from the other side fits. One, two, three, four, five, six. And as you can see, I could nearly get my little finger between there and the, what we call a veneer. I know a veneer is normally one millimetre or something like that, but this is what it's called. So that is screwed. There will be a lot more screws going that, probably another five or something like that. Now what we're going to do is to take this off here and we're going to transfer the markings through. We're not going to rely on where they marked it. So take it off here. I hope it wasn't too tight. Well, that one is. Finally out. So where this was originally joined as a plank, just turn this viewfinder so I can see what I'm telling you. It is actually coming away at its join. So we're gonna glue and screw that, but not this second. So you can see we've boarded over all these holes. So we're simply gonna transfer the markings through by putting that under there and making sure it's precisely aligned. To help me do that, I may as well put something through the screw holes at each end. We use probably some number fourteen screws.
Yep, I think that's about where we're going to want to be. That's a screw hole. I'm just trying to keep it aligned while we do this. We'd normally be using a wooden workbench and not a, a table like this. Obviously, I don't want to drill into this table. If we were using a workbench, we'd actually drill this and screw it to the bench. I think that's pretty well where we want it to be. So I'm simply going to go through with this drill. Um, theoretically it'd be better if we went through this with a pillar drill. But I'm not sure we'd actually get it into the into the pillar drill we've got. I think we'll, we'll give it a go. We'll take these rack pillars out. And I'll put the pillar drill on this bench. We will be using it for most of the holes, but I hadn't planned on using it for this bit. I've done half a dozen with the pillar drill. I I just can't uh, carry on like that, so it's not going to work with the pillar drill for me on this occasion. I'm just going to have to do it by hand and hope I don't get them all square. Right, so I've gone through the rest of them by carefully lining up uh, the hand drill. I've also gone through the screw holes and the rack filler holes. So, hopefully, I'll just get the vacuum on this. Hopefully, when we unscrew this, we'll have some meaningful holes. I must put these screws in this swell box front, I think there's five to go in. Because once this is in, I won't be able to do that job. So hopefully when I remove this, it will all be traced through. I hate to have to order another piece of timber. There we go. 
go. So with the calipers, we need to measure each pipe and drill for each pipe individually. That's a cock up, isn't it? We've got the securing screw right next to a, a screw hole. So somebody's going to have to get filled. Well, it's easy to start at the top. So start at the top, we will. So that's going to be our, our first one. So we should have, it's a 56 note organ so minus 12 for the bottom octave, we should have 44. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 so not, we don't go over, I, I wouldn't, they, they measure individually, so they're going to have to be fitted individually. So we we'll are going through with a rat, tail, a rat tail rasp individually. But the, these, so we can access the upper board screws, so I'm going to go through with this 14 millimeter drill bit, which is got a reduced shank so hopefully it'll fit in my drill wherever I put it I've just put that down switch the camcorder on where's it gone now hopefully this will fit in this drill my late father had an electric drill with a quarter inch chuck and when I did my training, the only electric drill in the building also had a quarter inch chuck. And you think, how, how much use is a quarter inch chuck? So these want to go, all I'm doing is drilling to feel the point, and then we'll drill from the other side. This is the, not the face side. So that is through. Again, I can feel the point there.
starting to feel the heat, starting to feel the point and stop. So the idea then, have I done all those? No, there's one here. There we go. So now I've done those, we'll turn it over and drill them from the other side. And see how many I've missed. I guess I don't keep pet rabbits without all this sawdust. Right. So the screw hole ones. Now this is right on the edge. This is going to be difficult to get a good result. We have, we've succeeded. So, next screw hole. Perfect. This is on the edge, and we've got a knot there. go. That will be dealt with later. And there. Or is it there? Can't tell. I just have to go back on that one. Oh, I missed it. Oh, have I missed that one? That's a rack filler. That's a screw hole. Definitely can feel that coming through. That's a rack pillar, that's a screw hole. So that is the gist of doing those, then we can actually put it back on its rack pillars and then using the calipers start drilling for the pipes. I'm going to go for a lunch break. See we're making steady progress. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 out of 44 notes. This is the largest drill bit we have at 40 millimeter and then we'll have to move on to different types of bits. Hopefully, that won't be too big. I'm just going to run it through again, it's a little bit tight. That's now fitting perfectly. So we'll move on to the next pipe. So with the caliper we can see about where we want to, whoops it's gone off. So it's staying 14 millimeters still. Let's try it in that hole before. So it, this is the stage at which we're going to be having to rasp nearly everyone in. 
We'll be going over to the zip type bits um, shortly. This will be the last hole. That'll be the last hole with the conventional bit. Just that fraction tight. Give it a bit of a waggle. Uh, still a fraction tight. Uh, can we move on to the D rasp? No, we're still on to the rack tail rasp. I'm sure we're going to do that. Alright, the next part, see where we are now. Well, it's still saying 15 millimeter, but we're not going to be able to waggle that um, around. So we're going to have to go in with, uh, that was 15, we're going to have to go in with a 16 millimeter zip bit. So let's get one of those out two to go and this is an example uh, of uh, where we're going to have to use the, the D rasp we've used the rat tail rasp on one or two of the smaller ones so we've just got one hole to go out after this with the, the what we call the offside and it just doesn't kind of quite sit it's just just needs that fraction so just going to run around it with the D rasp needs a fraction. You don't want them too loose because when you're tuning them you've got to hit the tuning slides upwards. You end up with the pipe coming out spot on there. So we've got one more pipe to go. Let's just see whereabouts we are with the caliper. So it's 22.5. So our next one up, let's see what the organ part measures. It's actually, is it? nearly 25. So I think we're going to have to move up with the zip bit. We haven't kind of got quite every available size of these. They'd go in twos eventually. Shouldn't be any breaking out on the other side because they've already been drilled through roughly from the other side first. So hopefully this isn't ridiculously too slack. No, there we go, that's our last one. So the next thing we'll we'll get that uh, vacuumed and sanded down and vacuumed again. So that's it, all pipes are racked in. That is the, the term. They are racked in. Let's take the calipers back to Mr. Chippy's workshop.
Right, we'll just run over it with the polish brush uh, just to seal the um, grain. And that's, now he's ready to go upstairs. And we put the four foot flute on there. And then we put the brand new 15 there. And that completes all the ranks of pipes then in the organ. At this point, we've got the upper board and most of those rack pillars ready to take the modified rack board. I've spent an uncomfortable time doing the pallets. Let's just uh, put this torch on. So we've taken the front, uh, pattern. it'll come to me what it's called, face board off the uh, great sand board and I'm just cleaning these pallets for the final time. There was a little tiny bit of debris on three of them. We'd got one or two whimpers and um, I, I just thought we'll have a, a final go at doing those before having to puncture the calico to, to clear any of those. And of course the 15th is going to take less wind, so it's going to be more noticeable. So I'm a bit too big to go on there, but I've had to do it. And um, there's one spring I want to um, strengthen slightly because we've got a tendency for that note, which is eighth from the top, whichever that is. Um, it, it just sticks sometimes. So just to strengthen that spring up a bit, and then we'll put that on. Because once these pipes are in, I won't be able to get to that. We'll need a 12-year-old a apprentice to get in there. So apart from that, back on this work table with the rack board there waiting to go in, we've got the upper, I think about 18 notes of the four-foot flute, which is the one, last ones to be cleaned. There's been some splits, so they're, they're gluing in, um, in cramps at the moment. So as I've shown before, we've taken the stops out and cleaned the pipes. But, although these need to be greased, let's see if we're in focus there, I think we are. We've got to peel these inside out and if they break, we've got to replace the leather. So really carefully, turn these inside out. Because if you don't do this, you're going to end up with them not sealing properly because they've been stuck all those years. It's dropped off now. Well, that's probably going to make it easier to turn it inside out without breaking it. So I've turned it inside out without breaking it. Just clean the wooden bit. I vacuumed it first, but we'll just clean this wooden bit. So that really should be glued on. I'm just going to use the, the Bostic uh, adhesive here, just to put a dab on there. Under no circumstances must it be on the sides, it mustn't stick to the sides. We can put that back and peel it to back the right way around. So it's now plumped up, that's the idea. As you can see. Now again, I've vacuumed the pipe, I'll just blow down, just make sure. I'm going to put the animal grease on. And then the notch indicates the front. We'll just pop that in the top. Just give it the lightest little hammer down. And that's another note done. So that's what we need to do for these 18 pipes. So next one, just try and peel back the leather. Otherwise we'll be putting new leather on it. And some organ builders or also the people who work for them um, make the mistake of getting glue on their sides. Take some patience. I 
don't know where my little brush is, but that's what we should. So again, we've peeled that back, but it hasn't fallen off. The glue has stayed put. Pop that back. Grease on it. Notch to the front. Pop it in. Another note done. There we go. So we're moving on to the pedal coupler action. Really, this is gonna go into the next part. So we're gonna be coming to the end of this part, I think. Get it published. This is the pedal coupler roller board. I've taken the trackers out for all these stickers. It depends whether they push or pull uh, as to whether the trackers are stickers. So we're going to take all these rollers out and repaint them. These are quite stiff. It's not gonna self-return. So that would be very bothersome. There's a couple of broken stickers or trackers. They're all in order. Um, I just wanted a few more pipes in before I finish this uh, video and probably a bit more tuning done. Uh, we're trying to get the four foot flute in. Let's just take the camcorder up there handheld. So you can see we've got these wooden pipes in now on this rack board we've just fitted. You can see that veneer I've put in. You see the metal pipes of the brand new 15th uh, towards that end. I'm going to put some smaller ones in. I won't put them in right at this end because it'll impede my moving around um, up here. So we'll certainly not be putting the bottom dozen in, probably 18, till the swell's retuned. So I just want all these wooden pipes cleaned and in and, um, and tuned and regulated. But uh, I'll be quite happy, I think, just to get the wooden pipes in and we'll call it today on, on part 32. And I'll try and have them tuned enough to demonstrate, or even though the regulation will be wrong, so they won't all be the right volume. We'll start off handheld on this. You know, it's amazing how dingy it is uh, up here, despite the enormous amount of lighting in this uh, building. But there you go, there's nothing overhead, and the, the, the uh, structure of the organ's now blocking the light. So we've got all this four-foot flute, and it's been such a lot of work putting this back together. There's still one note being cramped and uh, it have, having to be glued. But that's just one note. Uh, your next rank back's the principal. So the passage board here, the, we've got the new uh, rack board in with that um, veneer on it, which I made. We've got some of the 15s in, some of the highest notes and, and what we call the offside, the C sharp side, they're in and they are tuned. The thing is, if I put any more in, uh, I'm not going to be able to tune as well without bashing my bottom on them. So we'll just uh, leave those for now. Uh, get that tuned. So I so say we've got the four foot flute. We've got the then we've got the four foot principal, and then we've got the eight foot bell gamba, and then we've got the open diapason, the, the front, oh, stop diapason, and the open diapason. Bell gamba still needs to be regulated, so the volume on each note isn't exactly the same at the moment. We did some rough regulation, but just playing it now it wasn't quite right, so, so uh, that still needs uh, half an hour spending on it. So go back downstairs. The board now for the pedal coupler, the greater pedal coupler, isn't a swell pedal coupler on this organ. You see it's now dismantled, cleaned, and uh, we're going to be re-pushing the studs as necessary, and I've been painting the rollers. So I'm just going to end, I've just been practicing some hymns for Sunday, I'm just going to end. I was practicing some hymns for, for this service uh, today, it being Sunday. I think the camera's going to run out of battery. So just, uh, just run through this. I'm going to start off uh, on the, we're going to start off on the bottom keyboard with what we've got. We've still got whimpers because I've not dealt with that. That's going to be done from the front uh, later. So basically, the full organ is just open diapason, and stop diapason, and bass, the stop diapason, adding some body to it. Mm -hmm.